You might have heard of Bassem Yusuf, the Arab world's most well-known satirist. As the host of an Egyptian comedy show, he pilloried the ruling elite. That is, until he had to flee his own country. When I was driving through the airport, I was thinking, uh, I mean, I, just like a couple of years ago, I was the biggest name in this country, and now I have to escape. At least we did something, and now I had to run for my life. Yusuf was a surgeon in Cairo when the Egyptian revolution broke out in 2011. In his off time, he started a YouTube channel from his laundry room, and it went viral. That led to a nationwide television deal and notice from Jon Stewart, who appeared on the program. On his show, Yusuf mocked the Muslim Brotherhood and the leader of the army, General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, who eventually became president. Hosea, Hosea! Feeling threatened when an Egyptian court ordered him to pay millions over his jokes, Yusuf escaped the country. Went back home, packed as much as possible in two bags, uh, passed by my, my father on my way to the airport. And he said, like, I, uh, I, because I couldn't talk to him on the phone, I don't know if our phones were tapped or not. And I told him, I'm, I'm leaving right now, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, I guess I'll see you when I see you. I didn't even have time to say goodbye to my brother. Yusuf is now an immigrant living in Los Angeles with his family. He has a new book called Revolution for Dummies and a documentary about his time in Egypt called Tickling Giants. I decided to come here to, uh, to America, start from scratch, from a zero, like from a zero point where I'm speaking to a different people, different language, again restarting for the third time, a third career. Uh, it is uh, interesting and it's scary at the same time. Yusuf is famous worldwide, and he's been celebrated on national television. Please welcome Bassem Yusuf. Bassem, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Who the hell is this guy? But his future in America still isn't clear. I think I have the usual concerns like even Americans in the United States have. Can, will I be able to make it or not? I want to use that momentum to continue to have my place in, under the sun in the American media. Uh, I take improv classes, I take acting classes, I do, sometimes I do cartoon VO. Uh, I do auditions like anybody and get rejected like everybody. So it is being busy, uh, it is good. If leaders are so tough and powerful, why can't they take a joke? We come from an area where societies are not allowed to question, are not allowed to speak against authority, whether that authority was a family authority, a business authority, uh, school authority or country authority, religious authority, military authority. It's a sin. It's uh, like you're betraying us. Like how, how dare you speak about our leader? We broke that taboo. We actually spoke up. We spoke up against presidents, against leaders, against institutions that were absolutely untouchable. The Yusuf family moved to the United States during an interesting time politically. He's often asked about President Donald Trump. And as if it were some cosmic cruel joke, Trump recently invited Yusuf's tormentor, Egyptian President Sisi, to the White House. He's done a fantastic job in a very difficult situation. It's funny to see like which one of them is looking at the other as a role model. One of them wanted to, like, how can you have so unquestioned powers? And the other one, like, how can I be as stupid as you? I'm not worried about Trump as much as the atmosphere that he has created, the, the racism that he has enabled, the hate that he has uh, uh, like made it a mainstream. Uh, that was that that will stay long after Trump. This is what democracy looks like. It's amazing to see all of this activism. I, I'd like to see like uh, ten times more of snarking and making fun of this activism. But what does it lead to? Um, I, I'm I'm just like worried that people are. Um, resolving to just sharing uh, and retweeting and reposting stuff. But the fight is every two years, is in your midterms, is in your elections. If you do the, the, the digital activism and you don't do that, that's horrible. Uh, satire is great, but it doesn't do anything by itself. Do you consider yourself an exile? No, I, 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 I consider myself an exile even when I was in Egypt. You can be in your own country and you can be in an exile if you cannot connect with the people around you. And I think you can make your exile home. If you find a certain success there, if you find your way, your path, your voice, you know, that's, that makes it home.